The Holy Mountain is a distant peninsula which has safe kept Christian relics for many centuries. Currently, it is also a safe harbor for a culture that has survived invasions of foreign empires and many other hardships to a point of near extinction. Throughout this time, technology, be it the plow, the zipper, or the motorboat, was used by the mountain's habitants to mainly simplify daily activities without any threat to the elements of their culture. Why would new information technologies such as the mobile phone, the internet, or laptop computers be any different? The answer may lie in the fact that the global network that accompanies these technologies threatened the exact thing that protects this culture, isolation. For instance, the Pennsylvania Amish have used isolationism as a protection, banning the car, the telephone, or even electricity. But this tactic might simply not work for other cultural gatherings. If isolationism can be a protection for some, dispersion can also be lethal. When Mao Zedong invaded Lhasa, the cultural capital of Tibetan Buddhism, thousands of families fled to other regions. The less contact these groups have among themselves, the more they become diluted as a single group. Information technology could help to reconnect those culturally isolated groups, strengthen minorities, celebrate distant languages in an interconnected world, and not the opposite. His Holiness the Dalai Lama realized the existence of this opportunity. But how do you bring so much technology to a poor, rural Indian region? Dalai Lama pleaded for help to the world's hackers, and, ironically, the answer came from the cult of the dead cow. Those Texas hackers came and used empty rooms for servers and turned cupolas of monasteries into Wi-Fi antennas. They connected the region, but at a cost. When we change the architecture of a temple to fit technology, when we change the habits of the citizens, when we cover cultural symbols with tech icons, which culture overlaps which? Is this a network for monks or the hacker's internet? The computer is far from being a self-sufficient object. It needs not only the infrastructure for data and energy transfer, but also requires external services, peripheral equipments, and even a specific way of thinking, as well as sometimes structural changes in our own houses. A computer for monks must have a self-sufficient technology, be flexible and mobile, so their users can be free to change it through their own symbols and insert their own culture into it. Today's computer requires that we speak its language, when that happens, the user must alter their reading priorities to serve a tool that should be helping him. The computer demands the user to think like it, to be a part of its own culture. Complex problems must be handled by increasing the machine's intelligence, and not by creating more difficulties for the user. A computer for monks must adapt to the user's movements. It must understand our verbal or body language. It must be aware of the world around it, as well as being flexible, so as that any human mistake is a part of the interaction itself. In this manner, by absorbing symbols and not imposing them, it can be integrated into any culture. The interaction must be increasingly light and fun. The use of a tool, whichever it is, must make us feel a bit more complete. If we are ever to sell computer to monks, we must make it culturally neutral, universally simple, and just plain invisible. The Christian Orthodox monks of the Holy Mountain might want to communicate with the world, but will not be willing to open holes in their walls or accept interruptions in their routines. A computer for monks must be more simple, more useful, more intelligent, more straightforward, and more friendly. A good computer for Orthodox monks will definitely be a good computer for us all.